Okay. Hello. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Big Kate, and I'm your coordinator for the meeting. Um, could we have quiet uh, whilst Peter, whilst Petra and Julian are speaking? They will be willing to take questions during and do it at the end of the session. Could you please put your hand up to speak? This is the YPO Broadcasting Treaty, lobbying on an international scale. In light of the hackers' paragraph, the workshops, sorry, sorry the hack, 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 paragraph, this workshop, uh, in the workshops in the hacktivist system, sorry, the workshops in, this, in the hacktivist stream show their importance with, in, with the last lecture about ways to fight for your rights, organizing and way for right, right, organizing and lobbying on an international level to supersede national has become ever more important. Julian Finn and Petra Burr um, will be speaking about modifying what could be a very bad treaty, um, but with successful lobbying can be actually killed. All right. Please cap. Hello. As you can see, I'm Julian Finn, this is Peter Buhr. Um, <clears throat> I work for a German organization called Netzwerk Freies Wissen. So does Petra. Petra also works for, in, for the US organization IP Justice, based in San Francisco. For IP Justice, Petra was at the WIPO meetings during the, uh, the, the negotiations for the broadcast treaty, of which are, we are going to talk about. And I'm, I'm going to give you a short introduction about the WIPO and what the broadcast treaty is, and then Peter is going to tell you what happened at the negotiations and how this all could be dumped. Thanks. Well, um, I'll short give you, can I give you a short overview. First, I'm going to talk about the WIPO, about the broadcasting treaty's history, and then about the contents of the broadcasting treaty. And Petra is going to continue with the problems, about, uh, talk about the opponents of the broadcasting treaty, as well about her lobbying and the future of the broadcasting treaty and intellectual, uh, intellectual property rights all in all. The WIPO is the World Intellectual Property Organization sit situated in Geneva in Switzerland. It was founded in 1967 as the WIPO following another organization and its goal, come on, this is sort of not working and it should. Thanks. It's an organization within U the United Nations and as such it is um, supposed Sorry, <laughs> fucked up technology. Um, something is not working. Okay, since 1967, and as such, it is supposed to administer the Berne Convention on Intellectual Property Rights. And I have no thanks. This works better. You will have to. Um, click on. I hope this is going to get better when... I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the WIPO is supposed to administer the Berne Convention, which is, an, uh, which is a convention founded in... Um, uh, done in 1893, and its goal is to promote the protection of intellectual property throughout the world. Um, Within this WIPO, there are sort of different treaties uh, negotiated. We are going to talk about the Broadcasting Treaty in particular and leave all the other things apart, even though they are very interesting too. Um, the history of the Broadcasting Treaty um, is the following. Before the Broadcasting Treaty was introduced, there was the Rome Convention. The Rome Convention was a convention for performers, producers of phonograms and broadcasters that should protect the broadcasting rights of these people. So basically it protected um, if you had a, a, a television signal and uh, or broadcasting signal and if, if you had um, if you had contents that were broadcasted these contents were, pro were protected towards you 
and you could uh, uh, you could have you had certain rights uh, with these contents. Sorry. Um, in 1996, there was an update, the WPPT, which included more rights for performers and producers. Uh, within the broadcasting spectrum, but not for the broadcasters. The broadcasters then um, asked for their own, asked for their own uh, sort of treaty, uh, for their own sort of additional rights, as they were excluded. So in 1998, there was the first draft on the Wi Wiper Broadcasting Treaty, which uh, should enhance broadcasting rights. Well, as we can assume, this sort of went wrong because the broadcasting treaty was a di was first just the goal of the broadcasting treaty was first to prevent signal piracy which is basically if you broadcast something and someone else just takes the signal and transmits it again for example US TV stations are transmitted in Canada without uh, anything happening uh, without any money flowing and so on so that was basically the goal um, the question is still if that's a good goal but uh, what happened was there were sort of other rights that are added to it. So, th from from the goal that was proclaimed and from the goal that was they wanted to achieve, it actually went quite far away. Um, there was added a new sort of copyright around the, orig uh, the original copyright. So, if I broadcast something, they um, this is sort of seen as a broadcast even though it might be some sort of film that is already copyrighted and the broadcast of this film is additionally protected and cannot be retransmitted and cannot be copied uh, legally so the idea was to uh, to protect uh, you yourself from whatever you broadcast to be to have it rebroadcast somewhere else, but as this also included webcasting, this sort of turned really bad. Which, well, the, all of this would have been the end to YouTube, for example, because taking video where that was already broadcasted, casted on the net, was just would would have just been plainly illegal, as well as as well as other sort of webcasting uh, transmission um, services. And um, also, this treaty included mandatory trusted protection measures. So, if you ever heard of the broadcast flag, which was, um, which is the idea that every digital video recorder should have a sort of, um, sort of switch that uh, that the broadcaster ter can turn on, so to turn the video recorder off, um, that would have been introduced as well as all sorts of other. Um, protection measures including the forbid uh, to forbid the uh, breaking of DRMs and so on and so on so that I was all included in this treaty um, and now I'm going to hand over this presentation to Petra who is going to tell you what happened then at the WIPO after this was introduced I will speak on how we worked at WIPO um, on lobbying so if you have any questions on the contents of this treaty it would be a good idea to ask them now because then we can build up on this afterwards you have to give me this <laughs> no questions so far okay I try not to fall in some way so then it's that over um, first thing I want to do is a short introduction again, uh, what is IP Justice? IP Justice is a civil liberties organization working mainly um, on intellectual property rights um, and looking at international treaty negotiations, try to influence them. And I think it's very important that you know who I am. I'm, I was starting working for IP Justice in 2005 because I wanted to make an internship there went over to San Francisco and since then I'm the Global Policy Fellow and followed six sessions of uh, these negotiations for this broadcast treaty. So I'm more or less still an observer, not a really active person because it's a little bit complicated and first time you go there to a diplomatic conference, it's, um, yeah, everything is new. So um, this is the light you have to see. It's my interpretation of what I saw since 2005 and what the others told me and um, yes. 
the next thing I want to tell you is um, the first question um, what can NGOs do in the first step um, to influence treaty negotiations um, the first thing we have to talk about then is um, how does it work especially at WIPO. WIPO means World Intellectual Property Organization and this organization got the General Assembly which is taking every decision. So at some point in 1998 there was a General Assembly which was deciding to take preparatory steps for, for um, the broadcast treaty negotiation process and um, theoretically um, in this year, 2007, there should have been a decision of the WIPO General Assembly again to um, convene a diplomatic conference and only if there is a dip diplomatic conference, a treaty will be there at the end. So the General Assembly is not able to, um, con to make a treaty ready or have a treaty at the end. Um, um, where we acted and where the whole process is, um, I talk about now is situated is only these preparatory steps because it was a real big success for all of all the groups which are which were working there in Geneva um, that we all um, this year in June got a decision from a preparatory committee to not to convene a diplomatic conference so we all killed the treaty and that was really great it's a real success for all of us and how it comes this is what I want to tell you in the next 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes I speak too fast, <laughs> um, so if you can't follow me, please make something like this so I can recognize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, next thing. Um, how does it work technically? This is General Assembly, and I formally told you that we have um, this is the body which, makes, which is making decisions. So, this is the body which is taking decisions to, for example, um, build up a special standing committee on copyright and related rights. In 1998 they did this and this committee was talking on a draft on this um, broadcast treaty. And then there's a funny game working all the time. So in 1998 we got this General Assembly decision to that um, in this committee the SCCR should be talks on this broadcast treaty. So it, go it was going to SCCR. There were normally two meetings each year. Then at the end in the second meeting there was a recommendation from this committee going back to General Assembly. Then the General Assembly said, okay, I think that's right what you said. You have to, you need more time to discuss it. So we go to the next meeting and this and this and this. And so we went on till 2006. There were 15 regular sessions of this SCCR um, since two 2002. There was only this broadcast treaty on the agenda and in 2006 there was first time something new. Um, the SCCR was, um, was giving a recommendation to the General Assembly to decide to convene a diplomatic conference for, to the end um, of this year, till the end, to the end of 2007. But the General Assembly said, no, we don't think you're right for this. We have more and more opportunities to choose between different articles in this in the sessions in this draft treaty you have now on your table so you need two more special sessions before you can convene it or before we would convene a diplomatic conference in this in these two special sessions um, you have um, to, to get a consensus on the main topics which are discussed all the time and if you get a consensus here then you can come back and we will convene a diplomatic conference then, but if not, um, the treaty will not be talked of for a long time. These two special sessions were taking place this year in um, January and June, and um, in the last of these special sessions, the second one in June, there was decided not to recommend a diplomatic conference, the convening of a diplomatic conference um, to the General Assembly, which means um, that normally the G General Assembly follows the decisions of the committees and um, this means very cool thing um, that there will be no diplomatic conference not this year and um, we all suggest it's uh, dead for 10 years or something like that which is a real good news. So this is the whole 